Hello and welcome to another episode of Tux Lives. We are smack dab in the middle of an epic podcast trilogy, the G Trilogy. In part one, we examined Groff, the Unix text editing utility. In part three, I will show you how to put together a Linux machine with no GUI. No graphics, just the purity of the command line, the way it was meant to be. And here, in the Empire Strikes Back, the two towers of the G trilogy, I will introduce you to Grep, and I will show you what little I know of Grep. And uh, that, that's exciting enough, isn't it? But before we get there, I'd like to share with you a little Emacs update. I've talked about Emacs, I've mentioned Emacs, but I haven't shown you anything. So it's been four months, I've made a little progress, and I'm gonna show you uh, where I am with Emacs briefly. So, uh, I have this set to launch when I turn the computer on full screen, and I get this beautiful image, because I could not stand the welcome screen anymore. Once you finish the tutorial, you really don't need the welcome screen anymore. So. I have this nice Brothers Hildebrandt 1977 Tolkien calendar centerfold uh, to make me happy when I turn on my Emacs. So I've made a few changes. I changed that, obviously. I changed the theme, which I like, actually. It's quite attractive. I modified the status bar, and on my laptops, it shows me how much battery power I have. I got rid of that toolbar. I uh, modified the cursor, as you'll see. And uh, I turned off those stupid frames. Uh, I don't know if they serve a purpose. Maybe I'll want them back one day. <laughs> uh, and I've set it so I have control over uh, line numbers and margins. So I can set them on a buffer by buffer basis. What I've learned is basic navigation. I can move around. I can find things. I can go to a buffer directly. I can uh, shuffle the buffers around. Uh, like I do in a terminal multiplexer, I can split the screen and shuffle them around like I do in a terminal multiplexer. I've learned the uh, very basics of org mode. I can uh, make one of those collapsible lists. I can open files. I can make files. I can edit files. I can use the... Uh, there are two terminals. One is a command line that's basically meant for upkeeping the shell and uh, in Lisp, the language it's written in, and I don't know any Lisp, so I don't use it. And then there's NC term, which is an extension of my X term, and I can do everything there that I do in Terminal or TTY, which means I can browse the web in there, and I can listen to music, and I can do everything else that I do in there. Um, I also use the EWW Emacs browser pretty frequently now, uh, I can view PDFs, I can view and edit images, and I can send mail, but I can't receive mail because I have this config problem, and I just can't set up an email client config. Uh, so what I decided was configuration is not very important to me right now. The things I'm showing you are important to me. The command line, applications like Emacs, things like the Unix utilities, Pandoc, these are things I need. I need to learn. And uh, I'll get back to co configuration because eventually I want to get off the grid. I don't want to be dependent on a packaged distribution. So I'm going to have to learn that stuff, but I need to start over from the top and you know do it in a more organized way because just following recipes and cutting and pasting was uh, not getting me anywhere. So I'll just show you what I'm doing on here as I'm working on carrot field two. I'm almost there. Uh, I had some writer's block. I got through the writer's block by writing out all the key scenes by hand and then transcribing them. And uh, I have a few more scenes to write, but the writer's block is history. I'm ready to go on this thing. Um, where I am at Emacs, I can handle this. This is a pretty straightforward linear genre novel. And this is everything from the main plot. Uh, there are four plots, and each plot has its own document, and I will eventually load them up as well and merge them and do all that kind of thing. But I just had this set up so I could set the margins and so on, and uh, I'll probably want line numbers on here. I haven't made my mind up yet, but if I'm going to be using grep and so on, I'll probably want to get the line numbers on so I can relate it. Also, so I can relate it to when I'm doing uh, work outside of the GUI. Uh, I'm going to pull up quite a few documents related to this and keep them in the queue, 
but uh, it's interesting. The document uh, that I find I rely that I I don't I didn't rely on it, but that I'm drawing from most is this 2005 screenplay. Uh, it really turned out to be the most important version of this story. And if you look down here, you'll see it's 146 pages long. 80 pages is going to get you an hour and 45 minutes. 90 minutes is going to get you two hours. 120 pages is going to get you two hours and 15, two hours and 20 minutes. 146 pages is like Lord of the Rings. That is a big movie. And I don't know what I was thinking then. I really can't tell you. It seemed, it seemed possible. It really seemed possible at the time. And then I'm just messing around like, what if I want to take a break? I could read a comic book. So... <laughs> Uh, that's everything uh, Emacs that that I have. Um, there's going to be a lot of Emacs videos in the future, uh, definitely. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to do Pandoc in Emacs, and I'm going to show you how to uh, view a PDF in TTY in Emacs and other neat stuff. So let's get rid of that. He's shuffling papers. He's taking a swig of water. He's got his game face on. Let's grep. So grep stands for global, regular, expression, print. And that's what we're going to do. We are going to grep globally for a regular expression, grok. And we're going to print it here in the uh, pure, unsullied landscape of the command line. So first we have to invoke grep. Rise, come grep. And I think it's best to think of Grep as Rover the Bloodhound. Grep is going to sniff it out for you. Sometimes Grep's going to need a little help. Sometimes Grep is going to find things you're not looking for. Sometimes Grep is going to find things where you didn't know they were. But uh, Grep is going to sniff it out for you. So we're going to give Grep the scent. And the scent is Grok. And we're going to tell... grep where to search so this is basically telling grep to look for these four letters together and that's all we're gonna get there you go it turns up to expressions we got grok and we got grokked but i'm pretty certain that i started a sentence with grok and it's not showing up here so what we have to do is narrow this a little so what we're going to do is tell a grep we're definitely looking for a word, not just four letters together in a certain combination. We're, we're definitely looking for a whole word. There we go. Now we got a result, but it's very limited. Uh, it's very specific. It's narrow. It's precisely what we're looking for, but I know I used it in another context. So, I, and I'm still looking for that capital G grok. I know I started a sentence with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna toggle case sensitivity. We're gonna liberate it from that. And we're gonna see if it can come up with more than those results. Ah, there's my capital grok at the front of the sentence. And there's grok in its pure form, and there's grokked. But uh, I want to know more about this document, you know? I want to be, really be able to search it. So what I'm going to do is I want to see the line numbers as well. So I'm going to attempt to string here and see if this does everything that I told it. So I've added N for number. Fingers crossed. Ah, here we go. We got two, uh, two responses here, and they're on line one and line four, but what's on line two and line three? We got to narrow this down. So we're going to keep N for number. We're going to add B for before the line, and Let's just say three lines. There we go. Uh, we have a blank line though. <laughs> but that's okay because now I know 
uh, line two uh, and three are blank. So what I want to do now is look after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to change before to after and let's widen it. So we're going to start from the top and see what's underneath that top rock. Whoa, this is pretty much the whole document at this point. Lines 1 and 2 are occupied, line 3 is blank, line 4 shows up a grok, line 5 is blank, line 6 does not contain grok, line 7 is blank, and line 8 uh, does not contain grok. Uh, so that's the basics, pretty much. Uh, from there, you can do all sorts of of things um, but you know let's just try for luck I'm just gonna try a pretty long string we're gonna say you know uh, toggle sensitivity and uh, show numbers Uh, I don't know what this is going to do, but let's pull it up. Uh, it's pretty much what we had the first time, but it's in both instances, it's missing the term grokked. So let's just do one for luck. <laughs> and there I've zeroed in on that one term. So that is literally everything I know about grep. This is a powerful tool though. I stopped there because when you get beyond this, without the other utilities, without the other commands, uh, it, it'll search your whole system. Even if it searches within a folder, my folders, my directories are filled with text documents. Uh, you saw before thousands of pages of text documents. Um, you really have to learn how to use this. You really have to learn how to narrow and control those searches. And, you know, once you combine this with the other utilities, this is what hooked me. I came to Linux to get away from Windows was all I wanted. I just wanted to get away from Windows. And then I discovered, because I'm looking at these videos and people are editing documents, formatting documents, uh, creating documents without even opening them. I thought, how do you do that? It looked like magic. I had to learn how to do that. So I'm learning how to do that slowly. Um, and all of these things work in Emacs, which is great. So you can combine them all together into one you know, super structure. And frankly, this makes even the most tricked out word processor look like safety toys for slow children. <laughs> off the charts what you can do with this I mean this is nothing as you saw there are a lot of pauses and I probably got a couple things wrong but I'm showing you me learning this is not a tut tutorial I'm showing you my learning process um, and this is where I'm at uh, so far it's very exciting I I'm determined to master these things and uh, I'm already using Pandoc to download PDFs on the GUI-less machine and uh, convert them to text and open them in DocView <laughs> in, uh, in uh, TTY Emacs. It, it, it just gives you so much freedom, but the real utility is the ability to format and fix things and insert things without even having to open the document. And this is the brilliance of uh, what came out of Bell Labs. I believe Brian Kernighan wrote this program. Uh, yeah, Unix. Unix is the way. So that's all. That's everything uh, that I had to tell you about grep. I know it's not much, but I hope it was entertaining. And I'll be back soon with a really epic, truly epic episode. I'm going to show you how to set up a gui -less machine from top to bottom so thank you for watching this if you're enjoying watching my odyssey of learning linux if you're having a good time uh please uh, think of subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications and giving me a thumbs up for the algorithm and leaving a comment so i know that you're there so i will be back soon with another podcast and until then good luck to you